Hi guys. So I'm back to do more mushroom stuff and I want to work on the little notebook I talked about before. Um, this is from a box, uh, the box that had my brand new clip-on microphone in it. So I just cut it down a little, you know, cut the this end off, that end off, and this side. <laughs> and there you go. It's a notebook. Ta-da! So, uh, I had this digital, which I already cut down, you know, it was regular size like this. So I cut it down um, to the size I want, which is just not, I, like I didn't measure it for what, how many inches or whatever. I just kind of eyeballed that I want that much more than, that much bigger than the um, cardboard. So I'm going to try gluing it with this glue, which is just, um, oh geez, now it flew right out of my head. What is it? It's regular glue. <laughs> and it's in a, okay, let me look and see what kind of This, this is what it is. It's PVA glue there. Okay. And, it, and I just poured it into this smaller container so it's easier to work with. Okay, so I'm a little nervous because I haven't, I don't know, I haven't done gluing like this, a big thing in a while. Um, you know, I'm used to just little stuff. So I don't know why I'm nervous. Anyway, let's glue it. So I'm going to slather on some glue here and then spread it out a little. And I think I'll do this kind of in thirds. Um, you know, get this side glued down and do the spine and then do the other side. Good. Um, I've got this, so let's see if I can just use this and not my fingers. Oh, I already got some glue on myself. <laughs> I guess that's inevitable. Get my trusty towel. I, always, I have several of these that just kind of float around my craft room. Okay, I'm dripping inside here. That's not happy. Why? <laughs> Jeez. I guess that was a little too much. Okay. Well, do that. And, yeah, I probably should have marked it. Oh, well. It doesn't have to be exact. It's just, there. That's good. Okay. Press it down. So I'm just going to hold it for a couple minutes, I think. That looks good. Yep. Okay. Hmm. 
stuck down because I want it to get the shape right away. Um, of the spine. If that makes sense, hopefully. See like when I put it flat it's got this little ridge which it should have. That's that's what I want. Because when I fold it whoops and it's not going to be staying flat, it's going to be in that position. So we want it to, we want the paper to be in that position too, if that makes sense. Hopefully. Okay, that side. So when I lift this up, it's coming, you know, off the spine a little bit. So just kind of tucking a little more glue in there. And I might get some glue on my mat, but I'm not worried about that right now. I'll get it off easily enough. Okay, I think that's pretty well spread out. So I'm folding it right away, like I did on the other side, so it can get the spine formed. Just kind of get it into the right shape right away. I like this glue, it works really good. And it's not wrinkling. That a lot. Oh, we need a little more on the edge here. Um, what was I gonna say? Oh, this is really thick paper. I forget what it, what the weight is, but it's that hammer mill paper I've mentioned before. I can put a link to it. So I just wanted a little bit more of a heavyweight paper. It's not quite cardstock but it's not regular copy paper either. Gotcha. Winnie wants to say hi. <laughs> your good girl. Yes, you're my good girl. Hi, everybody. Hi, everybody. Oh, you're looking up. Good job. Okay, I gotta put you down. So the next thing is to cut off the corners. Um, we'll just do scissors. So I'm cutting it with a little, just a little bit left there so I can not have that exposed when I fold over the sides. This feels a little loose, but that's okay because I'm going to fold this over to the inside and that will secure it. Thank you. 
looked at. Okay, well, what should we do first? Maybe I kind of want to do the spine first. I don't know why. Let's just do it. Okay, and then to fold these sides, I think it's easiest if you just kind of use your table to do it. I've seen Pam at the Paper Outpost do it this way, and I th I've done it this way before, and it works pretty good. Just get these out of the way. So. Sorry if this is gross, it's just dry glue. figured out what I'm going to put on the inside yet. Probably some more paper, maybe more papers from this set even. And this is not going to be a junk journal because it's, it's for the non-initiated. <laughs> it's for people who've probably never heard of junk journals. Um, but they can use a notebook and they like mushrooms so why not make a super cool notebook with maybe a couple of pockets on the inside and a fancy mushroom decoration on the front cover that's what i think okay so then you're supposed to kind of mash this corner in a little I don't remember exactly how Pam did it. I think just, just like that, just a little bit, so that it sort of folds in and then gets glued down or folded under that. Yeah, that looks good. It gets folded, it smushes in this way, so it gets folded under this part, this flap. That makes sense. Okay, so I've got my light, my fancy light on. Hopefully you can see this. So <clears throat> talking about this corner. See how it's not cut all the way up to the edge there. I left a little bit. So that when let's go on this one. <laughs> this is the one I was talking about because I glued this one down already. And then we've got a little bit extra paper there, so I smush it just with my finger, and then it will get under this piece when I glue this down. And then you have a nice, neat corner, unexposed. So I hope I hope you can see that. <laughs> Hope that made sense. It's just a little fussy bit, you know. Okay, so now that I've smushed that, we can glue this down. It's so pretty. I'm not 
I'm not really that into flowers, but I do love the sort of ledger paper mixed with a little bit of fancy flowers. I think it looks really cool. So if anybody's interested, I'll uh, put a link in the description box for this little container. It's called a glue bot or a baby. It's actually called a baby bot. Not babe bot. <laughs> At least that's the way it's listed on Amazon. But whatever, I'll put a link to it in the description box. It's very handy and it does not clog up. You just, you know, peel off the gunk just like you do off your fingers <laughs> when you get it on your hand. Um, so, yeah, I really like it. It's very handy. And then you don't have to have the whole big, huge bottle. Didn't quite get that one folded in, but that's uh, okay. Yeah, otherwise, it is, it is done. It is covered. Doesn't that look cool? I love it. I love it. Okay. So, hmm, let's see. What do we want to do for the inside papers? Okay, well, I pulled out some of my papers, and I pulled out this, too. This is a, a Bow Bunny pack, I think, of ephemera. Yeah. So, got some flowers, some buttons. Um, not sure what all this is. Ooh, looks like some fun um, brads. Those are neat. Yeah, cool. Okay, some chipboard stickers. Another button. Oh, fun. Well, this is neat. These might work good as pockets. I like these colors. Oh, there's one in here that looked like. Oh, that's fun. Both sides are cool. That one. That one. <laughs> Rusty tin. How about that for a pocket? That would be cool. Okay. I think I will do that. But first I have to cover, still have to cover the page. So we'll set that aside. Um, circus, interesting. <laughs> grr, it says grr, roar, growl. I like it. Will be my pockets. If I want for the for just the paper backing, I think I just want something not quite as busy as these. Find it later. Okay, so I looked through this book that I showed you earlier in the video, or no? That was a different video. <laughs> I just got this book and it's got some really fun illustrations. So I looked through it for mushrooms and I found this lovely picture. And I think I can get a couple of pictures out of it if I 
cut it like this. Um, I was thinking it would be interesting to have like a long skinny um, picture on the front. So like maybe to there and about halfway over, something like that. So, um, but I still, I still need to find <laughs> backing paper for the inside. Okay, so this is some of my coffee dyed paper that I also used uh, green food coloring on. So it's got a green um, what's the word? A green tinge to it? Whatever. <laughs> okay. So I think I will use this and stop fussing over finding the exact right paper. <laughs> Uh, okay, so I don't need to cut the whole to cover the whole side, just, mm, let's see, there, and about. I think that will work. Let's try. Okay. So, no. so I want to have this this side up, but do I want, I'm going to have a pocket down here, so it'll cover that half, or that half. I don't know, I kind of think this is more interesting. Yeah, okay. I think I will cut a strip for the Fine, and make it wider so it goes underneath these two just a little bit. eyeballing. Okay. Alright. Let's make sure we get the wider one on the right side. That one goes over here and that one goes over here. Okay. Okay. That I almost forgot put that over the spine paper.
So, this bottom part will be covered by a pocket. Um, I'm hoping once, oh geez, let's not do that. Okay, I'm hoping that once the pages are in, you, you won't really see the spine that much. Um, so I'm hoping you won't see that. But those don't line up. It's probably not a big deal. Okay, so do I still want to use... Whoop. Do I still want to use these for the pockets? I think so. I think it'll make a nice contrast. Um, the brighter with the paler paper. Now for the pockets, I want to have flaps on the sides and the bottom so that you can actually you can actually fit more in them that way. They have some dimension. So Okay, so I've got my quilting ruler. This should be easier to cut stuff out, I hope. Um, yeah, I measured. <laughs> uh, I think the camera turned off when I was in the middle of telling you what I did, which was I measured the the size that I want for the pocket and then I added a quarter of an inch to both dimensions so that'll be the flaps um, actually no now that I think about it okay so like here's the pocket I want quarter inch on that side quarter inch on that side, so that's going to be a half an inch extra, that dimension. So that'll be four and a quarter. But this one I only want one on the bottom, a quarter inch on the bottom. So that will be just two and a quarter. Alright, four and a quarter by two and a quarter. I don't need that. I need this. So one, two, and a quarter. Two and a quarter this way. And I've got one, two, three, four, and a quarter this way. Yeah, I love these rollers. Okay, that is what I need. I'm going to try and use this to score on the quarter inch. That will work. Okay. And now I'm going to chop out these little corners. At an angle.
not the whole width because I don't want stuff getting smushed in the spine area. So I think that'll be good. And yeah. A little room on both sides. Okay. First I'm going to put a little dab on each corner here and glue the sides to the bottom. So have any of you guys seen the newest Disney animated movie, Encanto? We've watched it a couple of times already here in this house. <laughs> it's really fun. It's got music by Lin-Manuel Miranda. And it's, it's a fun story. It's really catchy music. I love it. And it's gorgeous the way that, um, oh my gosh, what's the one where the kid goes to the, the land of the dead to, um, in the guitar and his father and yada yada. I can't remember the name of that, but that one was gorgeous. And this one is gorgeous in the same way. Just really bright colors, lush landscapes. Probably because it's South America. <laughs> Somewhere in South America. It's not really uh, specific, but you can kind of tell that's where that's where they are okay so now I'm going to put glue on these three sides come on glue coming out there we go really you get more real estate when you do the flaps because um, you know you're getting all the way out to here because the glue is on the back side of the flap so it gives you a bigger pocket so did everybody have a good New Year's I don't know if I mentioned we played board games at home. <laughs> we usually go to a game party on New Year's Eve, but of course, there have been no game parties the last two years, which sucks. And actually, the woman that I'm making this mushroom stuff for is the one who, um, started the game party group her and her husband have hundreds of board games and i am not exaggerating <laughs> their whole basement they built shelving to keep the board games and um yeah they started this as a meetup group remember meetup i don't know if meetup is around anymore but that's how it started and um, we're meeting like several times a year and then there started to be offshoot groups that would meet weekly. Um, but one of the things they always did was a New Year's Eve game party so that people had somewhere to go to have fun without, um, you know, 
drinking alcohol or um, having that kind of party. So it was, it's very family friendly and I think we've been going since, oh my gosh, maybe before Robin was born? I can't remember now. Um, but, uh, yeah, we, we like to play board games, so just the three of us did that on New Year's Eve. And it was fun. We had a good time. Uh, okay. I think I'm ready to glue this down. Just kind of eyeball where I want to put it. Alright. Um, I usually do not like New Year's Eve. Um, actually, I hate it. I hate the whole New Year's Eve make resolutions thing that people do. Uh, I don't like it. it. It just feels like too much pressure and like you're just set up to fail, you know, with the kind of resolutions that are popular to make, like lose weight. Um, that kind of thing. <clears throat> so I, instead of doing New Year's resolutions, I like to do goals. Things I want to accomplish, like making stuff. You know, like I want to um, make a journal of stitchery, which is uh, Rachel's project that she and her sister are running. Roxy's Journal of Stitchery, except mine's going to be, of course, Carrie's Journal of Stitchery. Um, yeah, I'm really excited about that project, and I will be doing some videos on it. Um, I'll probably do one on picking out my stuff for my first page. Or block, I guess they're calling it a block. two pockets. The whole cover is done. Well, I haven't decorated the front cover, but I know what I'm going to use, so. Where is it, in fact? Oh yeah, so, okay, so I'm going to use this, or half of it, and then I cut out the page that has the um, corresponding identification of mushrooms. So I figured I could somehow save those. Maybe I'll put them on the inside or something. On the, in the pocket? I don't know. I'll do something with them because I'm sure they would appreciate that being mushroom people. That's who this is for is mushroom people. Okay, I'm back. Um, so I'm doing a bunch of little things right now for the notebook. I am cutting a page, sort of a template, but it, it will be a page in the notebook as well. I'm using this um, piece of paper that came in the pack with this one that was smaller, but it matches. And I like the colors, they're sort of earthy and remind me of mushrooms and forest. Uh, so what I did was I just put it in here and put it like, okay, I want like, I want it to go down that far, um, you know, have this much space um, inside the book. So I don't want it sticking out really, unless it's like tabs or something like that. I might do a couple of those. Um, and so I marked 
here about halfway between um, this this border like the same as down here that's what I'm trying to get and then I pushed it to the, the spine uh, so I could see how far it sticks out that way um, so I measured there, so I don't want it to stick out any farther to have that much room um, inside the book, or the notebook. So, obviously I'm not going to cut that, because that would just be uh, not working. <laughs> that would not work as a page. Words. Words are hard today. My brain is not the best in the best shape. I've been sick a lot the last few days. Um, okay. Anyways, what I will do is figure out what that is and double it and then cut off any remaining. So let's see. Let's see how much that is. Okay, so we go... Let's see, where's the mark? There it is. All right. Um, so I guess here is zero. Is that right? Or no, it'd be the cutting line is zero. Yeah, okay, so that's one inch, two inches, blah, blah, blah. So we've got three and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven eighths. Three and seven eighths. Um, do do do. Piece of paper. Need a piece of paper. No, not that. Um, <laughs> I know I have some post-its. Aha. Okay. So three and seven eighths times two. So then we get. Six and fourteen eighths, which is uh, what's fourteen minus eight, you guys, equals seven and nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, five, six, six eighths, also known as three fourths. Okay, so seven and three quarters is the length of the page. So let's see where that is and mark it. Oops, doing the same thing again. Seven and three quarters is half three quarters. Right there. We don't do perfect here. Okay, let's see. Does it fit in there? Yes. Nicely. Nicely, nicely. See? Okay. So that is ready for me to cut some more pages. And I should probably write down what's the height. Well, here I have this mat in front of me. Why don't I use that? Hmm. One, two, three, four, five, and three eighths. Okay, so pages are five and three eighths by seven and three quarters. All right, and I'm going to use some, I'm not going to show all of the cutting of pages, but I just wanted to show you how I did that first one. Um, I will use some coffee dyed pages. I think that'll look good in here. Uh, I mean, this is coffee dyed and green food dye. I don't know what else. Just, uh, you know, some scrapbook paper that I have laying around that looks good. That's the right color. Um, and I'll probably do either two or three signatures um, because I like I like doing more signatures with less pages. I think it looks nicer that way, and then it doesn't 
I don't know. I, don't, I, I think it doesn't become so much of a gear mouth. Um, and it probably won't be. I mean, this is just a notebook. It's not really a junk journal. Um, so, anyway. Yes, and I will... I'm thinking... I will bind the pages um, by doing the... Um, oh my god, words. Talk. <sighs> Using thread to go through the spine. Maybe put a few beads on. I don't know. I'll have to think about it. That might be too much. Maybe I'll just do like a charm up top and then just plain thread for binding. Okay, so the next thing I want to work on is the decoration for the top, the motif. So what I did uh, was I have this piece that I want to use and so I copied it on my printer just use the copier um, and then I glued that onto some thicker paper some uh, the manila file folder I have lots of those um, and then I cut out the mushrooms this is a nice one little one piece and then we got a little guy over here by himself and then I am going to use foam tape to, you know, cut it in smaller pieces to make them kind of 3D. I think that would look cool. Um, and then I've got a couple little leaves I'm going to do that for on this plant. Um, and then I think I said before I was going to go around the whole picture with this thread and this thread, which is Perlay DMC embroidery thread. So that's a really nice matching green. Maybe I should add a brown with it. That might be nice. Ooh, maybe I could braid it. That would be cool. It'd be like a friendship bracelet. <laughs> maybe not quite that far, but you know, I could pick three colors and braid them. That would be easy. So I just want it on the edge. I think actually this works better than the brushes for the edge. The brushes are more like, you know, spreading out on the surface. So, yeah, I probably shouldn't have. I mean, I didn't do any damage, but. This didn't work as well as if I had used this kind of applicator, but it's nice to have both now. So I just want to show you, <clears throat> I don't have my light because it's charging, but um, you can still see pretty well, I think. Let's see. Yeah. So this is one of the mushroom pieces. And I've got all these little tiny pieces of foam tape um, stuck on there. And then I've got some art glitter glue um, just to give it more of a sure hold. 
So now I'm gonna stick it on. There we go. Oh, I think that looks so cool. Now I'm wondering, if this is gonna go on the cover, maybe I should put some acetate over it to protect it. Mm. Yeah, I might need to build a little frame around it so I can put the acetate on the frame. Yep, more constructing ahead. <laughs> okay, so I've made some progress. Um, I put a brad in here and just taped over the legs there and then I've got an eyelet on this side so I'm gonna put um, some thread probably this thread um, maybe doubled up tie it on this end and then leave it loose so you can wrap it around there and I do have some room under the brad because I um, actually glued a little piece, one of these. <laughs> these are punched holes. These are my holes. <laughs> um, yeah, I saved them for a while. And so I have this little bottle of holes and they're, um, thin cardboard. They're not just paper. So there is some thickness to them. So I glued one of those where I wanted the hole and then, you know, waited for it to dry. And then I punched through that. So there, so that there is some room under the brad, um, even though it's secured. So that will work well. And then obviously I have been working on the cover. I um, glued, went ahead and glued down the piece after I got the mushrooms and the leaves on. And now I am gluing strips of this foam tape around it to make a frame. And then I am going to put, do do do, where is it? Can't see it because it's clear. <laughs> um, somewhere around here, there's a piece of acetate that I cut a little bit bigger than this piece. Um, so I am going to put that, you know, across the piece, glue it to the foam tape, and then put stuff over the top of the acetate to kind of cover, um, to secure it down and just make it more decorative, make the frame itself more decorative. So that's what I'm doing. Okay, so I am back after cutting paper for signatures. I just did, like I said, a variety of different papers. Whoops, got this upside down. Um, so you can see. And I ended up doing, I wanted to do uh, an odd number of signatures. So I ended up doing five because I feel like it's better to do more signatures with less pages. It just, it looks better, I think, um, at least to me. So I've got them all cut and then I, you know, put them, put each one together just to my liking, you know, the, as far as the order, what I thought looked good. And then after that, I, um, trimmed the edge you know because the one that's farthest in is sticking out the most so trimmed off the edge just with a ruler and a um, exacto knife and then I made a template um, I first I cut this piece of it's just manila folder the same size as the spine, which is <laughs> unfortunately not an easy number. It's like 
almost, um, uh, let's see, an inch and a quarter, but it's more like, t I don't know, one and a half eighths, <laughs> three sixteenths. Um, so yeah, I just fiddled around with it until I got it to where, um, it was about the same size and then I divided up the piece um, and started with the middle and then worked out from there to get me five spots and then I basically held this onto here and then poked my holes with my awl, which is here somewhere, yeah. Poked them through from the front to the inside, outside to the inside. Um, and now, um, getting ready to poke the holes in the signatures. So I did, I'm kind of doing um, this the way that Jessica Rapp binds a lot of her books. Um, it's just a two hole binding, which I thought would be fine, especially for this size. Um, so then what she does is she holds her signatures in here, you know, gets them lined up where she wants them as far as this way or that way you know, to the top or bottom, try and center it. And then you take a marker and then mark the edge of the signatures like that, which actually might go this way. Uh, so then you start binding from the back, from the signature in the back. Kind of, I need to clean up my space so I have more room here. <laughs> Anywho, um, so, so I'm looking at my signature, making sure the pages are the way I want them. If there's any short pages, which there are a few here and there, but not, not many, but if there are any that I want to kind of center them. Um, and then make sure I have this the right way up. Yes. All right. That doesn't really matter, but okay. So I need to poke through. I don't know. I could probably just hold this, but it makes me feel better to clip it. I know Jessica doesn't like clips, but it's easier for me. Okay, so then we got poke, a couple holes here, and I just have a piece of corrugated cardboard underneath. To kind of help make sure I go all the way through. And then let me just do it from this side. Yeah. make the hole a little bigger. Okay, and then I need a needle. I've got my thread out that I want to use to bind it when this is just jeweler's hemp twine. I probably got this from Amazon. Um, so, there's one of my needle books. This should work. So I cut a piece that's a little over two times the length um, or the, the height of the journal. All right, hoping I'm not gonna need pliers, but I will get them out just in case. So that is the bottom. So we're going to go through there and then through the last hole on the bottom of the book. Back 
need to get the hang of it all right so I decided I'm not gonna put any beads on here I did get some out but I don't know it just seems like too much maybe I will I did get my charms out and I picked out a little tree charm I thought maybe I will put just a, a um, a pin up on the top, punch a hole and put an eyelet and um, put a couple of things on it like the tree, actually not on the spine, on the front so it would hang down the front. Okay, anyways, let's not worry about that yet. Let's just tie this. Light went off. Crap. It's so much darker now. Got used to that light. Okay, well, <laughs> so that's how I get the signature in. And I will trim this. That's, that's pretty secure, it's not, it really doesn't have any wiggliness, so I think it's fine with two holes. Okay, so I realized that I didn't tell you about this. I just took pictures of it, but I didn't do video. Um, so once I got the acetate on here, which you can see kind of from the reflection, there is acetate over that picture. Uh, then I braided these three uh, yarns, well it's like two yarns and then the green embroidery thread, um, braided those together and then glued it down around the frame. And I think it works pretty well. I really like the wispiness of this um, eyelash yarn. I think it works well. Yeah, I thought I had showed you guys that, but duh. No, I just uh, took pictures, not video. Anyway, okay. So well, it is done. I'm super happy with how this turned out. So I've got a little charm here on the top. I put a jump ring um, through the eyelet that I punched a hole for there. And then I've got a bulb pin and a little charm and a little um, bead dangle that I just made. Um, and then as far as binding the signatures in, I decided to just put a couple, three buttons. Um, this one slides loosely, um, but the other two are pretty much stuck in place. Um, so yeah, I just picked a couple. Um, I thought that was that was good, not overkill. And then here I've got um, some more little beads on the closure. Oops, there we go. <laughs> so this is wrapped around this brad, which I think I told you before there's a there is space under it because I've got a little smaller spacer under there. So that unwraps. Uh, then we open it up. Oh, I'm not done. I forgot about these. I got to do something with these. These are the 
descriptions of the mushrooms that are in here. There's, if you look really close, there's a few numbers, like there's a number three, seven, eight, I think there's a five, there's a five. Um, yeah, so I thought it'd be fun to put these on tags or something, so I gotta figure that out. But otherwise, it's done. <laughs> um, so here's the first signature. So I did a little matchy-matchy with the pocket. Just because I had that bigger piece, I thought that would be fun. And then here's the middle of the signature. I've got a button and a couple of beads. Um, I tried to do something, you know, a little interesting on each middle of the signature. So the second one is there. Um, okay, get to the middle there. So I've got a white button and then a couple of red beads to match the red of the noodle on that page. Okay. Um, there's a straw paper. I've got, I think I've got one sheet cut up in here. Okay, third signature. There we go. Um, another noodle page in there, but here's the middle of this one. Some of my dyed, my hand dyed paper. Um, this one's got kind of a fun square bead. I really tried not to go overboard. I just, I can't help putting something on these strings. I don't want to just leave them, you know, as string. I think that's boring. <laughs> so, got to put a little something on them. Little something something. Okay, and where is the end of that signature? There we go. Oh, that looks kind of nice. I think it's the same um, scrapbook paper. I didn't actually do that on purpose, but it looks nice, so that's good. Okay, so the middle of this one is another of my dyed, coffee dyed papers. I think that looks pretty nice. And that's got just one yellow bead there, and then a little yellow button, one of my tiny buttons. So that's that signature. And here's the last one. And there's the middle of that one, another one of my dyed, dyed green papers. So that one has one green bead there and a green and a blue bead there. And that is the end. And then there's a pocket in the back. And I think that is it. And this actually works pretty well. I was afraid it would be too close to the little frame, but once you tuck it in there, it goes under just fine. So I am very happy with that. So I'll just have to make those tags and then it'll be done, done, done. <laughs> but I'm very happy with it. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video and the making of and fits and starts. <laughs> All right, so thanks for hanging out with me, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye!